As the NBA trade deadline approaches, who are we expecting to see hold a yard sale? I'm Madeline Burke for Sports Illustrated, along with Rohan Ned Carney and Michael Pina. And when we're looking around the league, Michael, I'll start with you here. What's one team that you are expecting to be a seller at this year's deadline? Well, the Orlando Magic are one of the worst teams in the NBA and have no chance of making the playoffs and a very small chance of making the play-in tournament. Um, so I think now would be a really good time for them to pivot towards a true rebuild and start over around Jonathan Isaac and Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony and the players and the assets that they can squeeze out of the talent that they already have in-house there are competitive teams around the league that would really like Aaron Gordon or Terrence Ross or Evan Fournier or Nikola Vucevic. I mean, they have some real vets who provide value on both ends of the floor. Um, all of them have playoff experience. And I, I don't ultimately think that Orlando will necessarily agree with me. And I think that their asking price for all of these players might be too high for some of the 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 competitive teams and the playoff teams that need their services but it would just be really great if orlando kind of shook things up and uh, made the playoffs more interesting than they already project to be bro what about you uh, i'm looking at a team that's already made a couple of trades maddie the oklahoma city thunder uh, they still have a couple of guys who i think can be really useful uh to a contending team uh namely george hill and al horford george hill obviously uh, spending a lot of years in Milwaukee with the Bucks, where he has playoff experience. Al Horford, same with the Hawks and the Celtics. Uh, those are two vets who obviously don't fit the Thunder's timeline. Uh, they're not going to be long-term foundational pieces there by any means. Uh, and I think that they could provide value uh, to any number of contending teams in both conferences. So I'd like to see those guys get moved. The best thing about the Thunder is we also know what the asking price is going to be. Uh, it's going to be a first-round pick. It's going to be a couple seconds. It's not... It, it's seemingly not very complicated to trade with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, so the, that's a seller I have an eye on because I think there's a couple more guys uh, who have value there. Yeah. I'm going with another uh, team in the West, Sacramento Kings. I mean, they're on a 15-season playoff drought, and I just don't see that ending this year. So once again, expecting Sacramento to be sellers at the deadline. I mean, they've got $28 million in expiring contracts. They get, they're going to have to want to build around this young core of Deer and Fox and Tyrese Halliburton and move off some of these veterans. And, you know, I know Vivek Ranadip doesn't want to tank, and Howard Beck has reported this team wants to be competitive, but they're just so far on the fringe. They're already four games back of the final play-in spot, three teams between them and the 10th place Grizzlies. Um, you know, trading a guy like Harrison Barnes as hard as he would be to replace could yield a strong return. It could get picks and a player that's ready to play major minutes now. And then you've got... Uh, Bielitsa, who's shooting career high 39% from three and also playing a career low 17 minutes a game. And then, you know, Buddy Heald, who's been very inconsistent, but recent improvements perhaps could increase his trade value by low, sell high. You know, that's what they say. So we'll see a week away, a trade deadline, March 25th. 